Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, the place where you find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Parentage Universe 2118, a Parentage Universe created by myself, Mark the Red Corner Ranger, and Cosplay Dude 637. We are the Three Ranger Bros Studios, and this is a collaborative project. I'm your writer and narrator, but the story has come from the three of us. Power Rangers Global is a collective storyline where Loki reigns over the world and forces the gods into submission, or forces them to allege with him. The gods either follow Loki or are forced to, and they are the army that Power Rangers Global have to face. One by one, the Power Rangers Global will relinquish the gods and mythical creatures under Loki's reign, and eventually, hopefully, they can take down Loki. In this chapter, the team are headed to a state park, and hopefully, find out exactly what Loki's after. So let's dive in. Power Rangers Global, Chapter 6, A Trip to Fort Mountain State Park. The rangers teleported into another under construction library. They all walked out and looked rather confused as it seemed like a rather normal place. Brohan then told them to travel to the mountain park which wasn't that far away. When they finally got there they stood there and took in the amazing view but they were also rather confused. Okay Brohan, what are we doing in southeast America? Mark asked over the comms. There is a monster causing havoc close by. You are in the Fort Mountain State Park. The confusing part of this is the monster's just blowing parts of the mountain to smithereens. Brohan replied. Elias looked over the mountainside and saw a whole group of people running away down the mountain path. Well, going that way might be a start. Elias stated, pointing at the runaway tourists. I did not wear the right footwear for hiking, Himiko grunted. Guys, why run around a mountainside when we have someone who can fly? Eric sighed. Everyone turned to Lip, who looked at everyone rather awkward. Who, me? Lip muttered. I mean, he has a point, Elias replied. It would save me a pair of shoes, Himiko mumbled. Oh, fine. Lip growled. He morphed into the Ranger of Ra and then took flight, and soared over the mountainside. He soared over the pathway and spotted a group of mummies. He landed and demorphed. Guys, I found some mummies, Lip said into his communicator. He then ran into the group of mummies and jumped in and started fighting them. He kicked one of them in the back. He then got hit in the ribcage, but managed to block the next incoming strike. Then he ducked down and swooped his leg across the ground, tripping over a mummy. Then the others ran in and joined in the fight. Himiko pushed one of the mummies back before punching it in the face. Mark caught the fist of one of the mummies and then threw his leg out, kicking its side, then its chest, and sending it flying back. Elias punched one of the mummies in the face, then pulled it down and kneed it in the head, then spun around and kicked the mummy back. Eric blocked an incoming strike with his forearm, then pushed the uh, fist away, whilst with the other hand he grabbed the monster by the shoulders and then rammed his elbow into the monster's face. The mummy then staggered backwards whilst the mummy stumbled. Eric put his foot between the mummy's feet, kicked both its ankles, making the mummy drop to his knees. Then Eric grabbed its head and rammed his knee into its face, making the monster fall back. The group cleared the mummies with ease. They all dusted themselves off as the mummies disappeared and then they all regrouped. Brohan said there was a monster, so be on alert, Eric told the team. The walk along the path was beautiful as they strolled, all ready to fight though as they kept in the fighting stances. They walked onto a big wooden platform overlooking the mountain rocky view. I spend my time trying to figure out Loki, that I forget how beautiful this planet is. Himiko sighed. Don't worry, Himiko. We will get Loki. And you can spend your days travelling the world, Mark told her. It's strange. I've lived in Egypt for ten years. Never thought about travelling. And I'm trying to save this planet. Going to Athens and now this mountain park. 
it's been breathtaking and just been too preoccupied to notice. Himika replied. Looks like you're going to get your chance to travel, now that we have a way to teleport everywhere. Eric stated. I must admit, this kind of beats sound. I mean, just look at that view. Lip grinned. Everyone stood there for a moment and took in the amazing sight. When suddenly an explosion erupted, everyone looked up the mountain and saw the monster. A being with red and white shiny scales. Its head took that of a snake with four horns and a red crystal on its forehead. The monster stood there and growled. Suddenly the clouds rolled in and the sky became very grey and it began to rain. Coincidence? Elias asked. Whatever. We better deal with this fast. It could cause a landslide. Mark barked. It's morphin' time! Mark called out. Mark held out his Cornish power morpher and it popped open. Kono Bisficken! Mark called out. Then the morpher dematerialized, leaving the coin floating there. Mark then morphed into his ranger suit. His helmet formed over his head. Then the coin started spinning and it flew at Mark, hitting Mark in the chest. The coin shattered and Mark's Cornish chest shield formed around him. Mark had morphed into the red Cornish ranger. Eric held out his fist. His green Celtic ring started to glow. Now you're not, Kilchuk! Eric called out, then he held up his fist into the air and suddenly a Celtic rune formed above him. He then lowered his arm and the rune lowered itself down and it phased over Eric, his ranger suit forming over him as the rune descended down. As the rune touched the ground, it vanished. Eric had morphed into the gold Celtic ranger. Elias pulled off his necklace and crushed the crystal in his hand. The energy that came from the crystal formed into a sword sheathed in its shield. Elias grabbed the handle which extended from the top of the shield and pulled the sword out and held it up to the sky. The Olden's craft, Volden Verda. Elias called out. Then the blue energy seeped out of its blade and it formed around him. Then the energy formed into his ranger suit. His horns grew from his helmet as he sheathed his sword. Elias had morphed into the blue Viking Ranger. Lip held out his arm. Ra appeared behind him and sunk his talons into his forearm. White veins rippled through his wrist and a wrist-bound morpher appeared in the shape of a falcon head. Lip then held out his black crystal scarab. Its wings opened and the key extended. He then opened the falcon's mouth and placed the key inside and then closed the mouth down. Capra! Lip called out. Then the falcon eye started to glow and the energy wave pulsed from his morpher and it wrapped around Lip's entire body, forming into his ranger suit. Ra, the god of the sun, then married into Lip's body and his helmet formed around his head. Lip had morphed into the white Egyptian ranger of Ra. Himiko grabbed the cherry blossom hairpin that kept her hair up and she pulled it out, her hair dripping over her shoulders. Attention time! Neo no meo no temi mi! Himiko called out. Then the tip of the pin started glowing. She dropped the pin and it sank into the ground through a veil of light. Then Himiko was encased in a giant flower bud. The pink flower started to glow and it opened. The flower exploded in a flurry of petals. Himiko stood there in her ranger suit. She had morphed into the pink Japanese ranger. The rangers ran at the monster. The ranger of Ra flew at the monster head on and tried to scratch the monster with one of his claws, but the monster just took the attack. The red Cornish ranger summoned the power daggers and slashed the monster several times, but then the gold Celtic ranger threw his javelin at the monster. It struck the monster, and the pink Japanese ranger threw several pink shurikens. Each one struck the monster head on. The blue Viking ranger rammed into the monster with his shield. He then swung his sword, but the monster caught it and then grabbed the viking ranger by the torso, lifted him off the ground, then the blue fog escaped the monster's mouth, and struck the viking ranger. Sparks exploded off of him, then the monster threw the ranger off the mountainside. He crashed on the f- ground, bounced off the ground, and skimmed down the mountainside like a pebble skims across water. He rolled down the mountain, fell off the ledge, and landed on the car, which was parked on the road. He demorphed, and Elias grunted due to the impact. Elias rolled off the top of the car and landed on his feet. He then looked up and realised he'd have to find a way back up to his team.
He then hit his communicator. I'm okay, guys. Just give me a few minutes to figure out how to get back up to you. Elias told his team. Okay, Elias. Hurry back. We will hold this monster off. The Red Cornish Ranger replied. The four rangers ran at the monster. The beast b breathed its vicious breath once again, and sparks exploded off the rangers, and they were thrown off their feet. Then the monster turned around and walked off, blasting the ground with thunder strikes erupting from its horns. The strikes hitting the ground, the rocks exploded from the attacks, and the rangers climbed to their feet rather confused. It's not even bothered by us, the ranger of Ra grunted. I think I know what it is, the pink Japanese ranger stated. What you got, Himiko? The Red Cornish Ranger asked. This mountain, State Park, used to be named something else before the park was built. There was a legend with a horned serpent associated with thunderstorms and rain, and had a jewel on its head. It was called a Yukana. It was said that a Shawnee medicine man killed it, stole the jewel. I think this monster is the Yukana. The pink Japanese ranger explained. How does that help us? The gold Celtic ranger asked. It doesn't really help, but at least we now know where it gets its power from. It's another mythical creature, like the chimera yesterday, the ranger of Ra told him. Let's keep at it till Elias joins us. The red Cornish ranger told the team. They all nodded, then chased after the monster. As they approached, the monster blasted the ground one more time. Then it bent down and picked up a piece of purple rock, covered in gold hieroglyphics. It looked like a piece of something. The rangers all stood and watched the monster let out a mighty hiss. Then a green light flashed before them, and Loki stood before the creature. Good, you found one. I'll take it from you. Can't believe I'm saying this, but good job. Loki told the monster, snatching the rock from its hand. Then he turned to the rangers. Oh, the colourful thorn in my side, Loki growled. Loki, we presume, the gold Celtic ranger called out. Doth mother know you wear her drapes, the ranger of Ra mocked. Don't mock me, you are mere mortals, and all you do is get in my way. I shall rule the world. I have the gods under my control, the mythical creatures, and everything in between. You don't stand a chance, Loki growled. We will beat you, god of mischief. The red corner stranger barked. Try me, heroes, Loki roared. Then he turned to the Utina monster. Deal with them, Loki ordered. Then he teleported away. The monster hissed, then charged at the rangers. Hey, listener, this is a not paid for product placement for the Zero to Hero podcast. What do you if mean? If you not definitely paid? like what you're listening to now, come on over to the, the Zero to Hero podcast. Lights on, just anywhere you want to be able to find your podcast at trash bills, like dude, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, oh, Amazon Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, which is still a little weird. The two next two weeks. Come on over and enjoy yourself drop. and listen to Billy and myself bicker, argue, and, well, fight dog. about a lot of things, no, as we are the Bulk and Skull of Podcasting. How the hell am I Good luck out there, and welcome back to the show. Elias had met the driver of the car he landed on. The guy had offered him to drive him up to the side of the mountain. They sat in the car rather awkwardly for a couple of minutes. So, tourist or local? The guy asked. Tourist. Elias responded. Same. Got some stuff to do here, then I keep traveling. The guy stated. Fair. I'm just looking for my friends. Elias told him. So where are you from, kid? The guy asked. A place really far from here. Elias sighed. Elias and the stranger then started talking about the fact that Elias was very far from home, and the fact that he didn't really get along with his parents so well. It wasn't the fact that they argued or anything like that, it's just Elias didn't seem to bond that well with his father, and felt very awkward talking to him about this. The stranger asked him why this was, so Xander swallowed hard and explained. Sure. 
let's do this. Um, my dad has a studio business, and I think he wants me to join him, but I don't know if I want to. Elias stated. Seems like with going out all the time really far away from home, then maybe he just wants to spend time with you. The guy told him. I never thought of it like that. Elias muttered. Maybe just give your old man a call. See how that goes. The guy suggested. The car came to a halt, and Elias looked across to where he was thrown off the ledge. He looked at the guy and nodded at him. Thanks for the lift and the advice. Elias told him. He then climbed up the car and started walking away. He stopped and turned around to face the driver. I didn't get your name. Elias said. Heimdall. Nice to meet your kid. The guy replied. Name's Elias. Nice to meet you, Heimdall. Elias said, rather confused, as he knew in his universe Heimdall was one of the gods. Heimdall tipped his imaginary hat to Elias, then drove off. Elias watched the car disappear off in the distance. He found it rather strange. The guy had a god's name. He did not remember Himiko mentioning Heimdall before. Not Idris Elba, but I guess he'll do. (laughs) Elias joked to himself, then he ran off to find his friends. He found the four rangers fighting a monster. He morphed once again and joined in. Took your time. The pink Japanese ranger snapped. Now we're all here. Can we please beat this thing? The red Cornish ranger barked. The rangers all jumped into the air. The red Cornish ranger summoned the power bow and fired several arrows. The pink Japanese ranger threw several shurikens. The gold catcher ranger threw his javelin. The monster got barraged by all the attacks. Then the blue viking ranger landed on the monster shield first, crushing it into the ground. The ranger of Ra swooped down, grabbed it and lifted it into the air and slashed it several times with his claws. Then he dropped it. It landed on the ground, the Red Corner Ranger summoned the Power Sword, and both him and the Blue Viking Ranger both slashed the monsters with their swords. The monster fell back and exploded. The Rangers demorphed and watched as the big horned snake-like creature slithered in front of them. It formed from the explosion, now reverting back to the mythical creature itself. It looked each one of the team in the eyes. Uh, is it gonna eat us? Lip asked. Dude, shut up and don't move. Eric hushed. All of them stayed perfectly still. The snake creature analyzed each one of them, one by one. Then it simply slithered away, down the mountainside. Himiko, where is it going? Mark asked. You can tell it lives in places with trees and water and stuff. Guessing it's going to somewhere like that. Himiko explained. So that's two monsters down and two mythological creatures saved. Elias stated. But we still have a lot of unanswered questions. Mark grunted. Like what was that stone thingy the monster found? And why does Loki want it? Lip asked. Is there more of the same? It seems like it was broken, like it was a piece of something bigger. Eric said. I'm still stunned. We met Loki in person. Himiko sighed. You met Loki. Oh man, how did I miss that? Elias moaned. The team all headed back to the city and walked into the library. Elias stopped. Alright guys, tick five. We did it. Mark told the team. Then Elias walked into the other room and activated his communicator. And then his father, back in universe 0.0x, answered. Hey, Dad. How's things? How's the studio? Elias asked his father. Yeah, I'm good. This is a nice surprise. His father stated. Elias then spent some needed time talking to his dad. Mark, the Red Cornish Ranger, was played by Mark, the Red Cornish Ranger. Elias, the Blue Viking Ranger, was played by Cosplay Son 637 Himiko, the pink Japanese ranger, was played by Cosplay Wife 637. Eric, the gold Celtic ranger, was played by Cosplay Dude 637. Lip, the ranger of Raw, was played by Ty Tiger. And Heimdall was played by me, Jared. This podcast is a production of the Three Ranger Bros Studios, in association with Zio to Hero the Podcast. 
And there we have it guys, thank you very much for listening to this story. If you've enjoyed this story then you might want to check out all of my Tiger Tales channels. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. There's Tiger Tales, the first and the original. This is a place where you'll find stories on fan fictions, diving into all sorts of fandoms, including Power Rangers, Pokemon, The Walking Dead, Marvel, DC, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and so, so much more. Tiger Tales The Lost Stories follows the same suit, but all the stories on that channel are in the first person perspective. Then there's Tiger Tales Game Over, a channel where all of the storylines are related to video games in some way or another. Then we have Tiger Tales X, where I write official crossovers, crossovers that aren't needed but are very wanted and crossovers I thought might work. Then of course we have Tiger Tales Mysterious Origins, this is the YouTube channel dedicated to my own original stories, all the stories on this channel are original and my own, and it also answers questions on certain characters throughout my stories like William Cranston, Mr. Pocket and Ace from The Color Matrix. If you've enjoyed these storylines, then please make sure you check out the following podcasts. Storytime with Cosplay Dude 637 Power Rangers Universe 19 Sailor Moon E and The Order. And make sure you check out two YouTube channels, Nostalgia Time and the One Piece Audio Drama. They are all written and read to you and edited by Cosmic Dude 637 my Paravatai and best friend. Then, make sure you check out the podcast Nerds Through Comics, which is directed by Mark, the Red Corner Ranger. This is where he adapts comic books into audio dramas and also uploads his own original Power Ranger storylines. We are the Three Ranger Bros Studios, a collaborative project, and we are all voice actors and helpers of each other's stuff, so make sure you go check us out. We're in association with the Zeo to Hero podcast, so a huge shout out to Billy and Jim, the co-hosts, and of course the podcast and the community that they lead. If we're shouting out podcasts, I have to shout out Jared, the host of If You Give It Down a Podcast. Make sure you check it out because he interviews some fantastic guests, from wrestlers to voice actors and the such. And of course, if we're talking podcasts, I have to mention my own, the Tiger Nexus podcast, where I interview content creators and geeks alike. A huge shout out to all my supporters and followers, my voice actors, the people who co-write my chapters, and the sorts. So a huge thank you, and of course, a big shout out to a Crown. Uh, specifically him, because he helps me a lot with some of my stories, specifically the Color Matrix and the chapters that go on Tiger Tales Game Over. Thank you very much guys for listening, now don't forget to subscribe to the channels, like the videos, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. With that being said, I shall see you guys in the next one. That before we can... <laughs> don't touch my Pringles. <laughs>